So today we are going to start our practical on to the endocrine system and in this first we will discuss the histology of the thyroid gland. So thyroid gland is basically situated in the neck region which is having the two lobes and these two lobes they are connected with each other by the isthmus. Now the microscopic structure so thyroid gland is covered with a capsule onto the most peripheral aspect. Now from this capsule there is an extension of the various connective tissue septa towards the glandular substance. Now this connective tissue septa they are dividing this gland into the various lobules. You can see this uh, lobule here. Now within this lobule there is a aggregation of the follicular cells and that is forming a structural as well as the functional unit of the thyroid gland that is termed as the follicle. Now within the follicle in the center there is a cavity or lumen and in the peripheral aspect there is a wall of this uh, follicle that is formed by the follicular cells. Now there is a variation in the shape and size of these follicular cells according to the stage of the uh, activity but we will see what is the uh, variation in a next slide. Now apart from this follicular cells the cavity that is situated within this follicle that is containing a secretory material that is termed as the colloid you can see this the cavity of this follicle that is occupied by the colloid material. Now the outer aspect of this follicle that is covered with a basal lamina here you can see this is the basal lamina and onto this basal lamina there is a uh, occupy this basal lamina is covered by the reticular fibers as well as the capillaries, lymphatics and the nerve plexuses. Now this lymphatics, capillaries as well as nerves they are entering into the gland via the connective tissue septa here. So within the connective tissue you can also look at the blood vessels as well as the lymphatics and the nerves. Now basically two types of the cells they are found in the thyroid gland. First we have already seen this is the follicular cells. Apart from this follicular cells there are para follicular cells. You can see here the pale stained cells here that is known as the para follicular or the C cells. The location of this type of cells that is uh, between the follicular cell and the basal lamina as well as they are located in clusters within the connective tissue of the thyroid gland and another name of this para follicular cell that is also known as the clear cells. They are the cell they are going to produce the hormone that is known as the calcitonin. So this is something regarding the light microscopic structure of the thyroid gland. Now here in this schematic diagram you can see the variation in the size and shape of the follicular cells according to the activity. First you can see this follicle that is having the columnar type of the cells columnar type of the follicular cells are there. So this is representing the highly active stage of the that particular follicle and in the center in the cavity of this follicle you can see the colloid but that is scanty. So you can see scanty colloid is present within this highly active thyroid follicle. Second one you can see this is the moderately active stage of the thyroid follicle. Here the follicular cells they are of the cuboidal type in the shape and the amount of the colloid that is moderate as compared to the highly active thyroid follicle. The third and last one that is the inactive thyroid follicle in that you can see the shape of the follicular cell that is squamous in type and the colloid material that is present within the cavity of this follicle which is uh, abundant 
as compared to the highly active or moderately active type of the thyroid follicles. Now, in any thyroid gland, the various uh, numbers or various proportion of this highly active as well as the moderately active as well as the inactive thyroid follicle present. So, in the next slide, this is the schematic diagram of the individual follicular cell that is observed under the electron microscope. <coughs> now, this is the luminal aspect of this follicular cell towards the cavity of the follicle and this is the basal aspect. So, towards the luminal side, you can see the projections that is termed as the microvilli. Now, within the cell you have the nuclei, above the nucleus there is a position of the Golgi complex. So, you can term the, that supranuclear Golgi complex is there and also there is a presence of lysosome here and below to the nucleus towards the basal aspect you can see the endoplasmic reticulum of the granular type. And just nearer to this microvilli, you can see this secretory vacuole okay, that is containing the secretory material. So, that is something regarding the electron microscopic structure of the follicular cell. Now, this is the diagram to show you the synthesis, storage as well as the secretion of the thyroid hormone. So, first at the bottom you can see this is the capillary and this is the wall of the follicle that is containing the follicles, follicular cells and this is the cavity of that follicle containing the colloid secretory material. Now, within the capillary lumen, you can also see the placement of the endothelial cell and this is the extension of this endothelial cell cytoplasm here. Now, within the capillary, you have amino acid as well as the sugar as well as the iodide material. So, trapping of that iodide is done by the follicular cell. Within that cell, there is a trapping of this iodide material and then with the help of the peroxidase enzyme, this iodide is converted into the iodine. Another raw material that is coming from this capillary lumen that is the amino acid as well as the sugars and that is going to be synthesized in the form of the thyroglobulin which is one type of glycoprotein by the help of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And from this rough endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus that is uh, taking this material and adding the sugar within that material and then uh, transported it towards the luminal aspect in the form of the vesicles and by the method of the exocytosis this material is secreted within the uh, lumen of that follicle. Now, within this uh, lumen this material is going to combine with the iodine and that is converted into the iodinated thyroglobulin. If the three molecules of the iodine that is attached with this thyroglobulin that is known as the T3 and if the four molecules of iodine that is attached with this thyroglobulin that is termed as the T4. Now, again this iodinated thyroglobulin that is taken back by this follicular cell in the form of the vesicle by the method of the endocytosis. Again within the cell with the help of the lysosome, there is a hydroxylation of this uh, thyroglobulin and that is uh, going to produce the T3 as well as the T4. The amount of T4 that is more as compared to the T3 and you have to remember that the active form of the thyroid hormone that is the T3. Now, this both the products they are lipid soluble. So, they can travel through the uh, plasma membrane and then poured again into the capillary lumen and then uh, going towards the particular organ for their ultimate 
action. So, this is something regarding the synthesis, storage as well as the secretion of the thyroid hormone. Now, the control of uh, this secretion of thyroid hormone that is by the uh, feedback mechanism. Suppose, if there is a uh, lower level of the T3, T4 as well as the uh, basal metabolic rate, then that is going to stimulate the hypothalamus which is going to release the thyrotropin releasing factor. Again this thyrotropin releasing factor act on the pituitary gland and that is going to secrete the thyroid stimulating hormone and that TSH will ultimately signal the thyroid to increase the T3 as well as the T4 hormone. And again the control of secretion of the calcitonin hormone that is secreted by the parafollicular or C cells that is if the calcium level within the blood that is higher that is going to stimulate the secretion of the calcitonin. So, that is the hormone that is the having the action opposite to that of the parathyroid hormone which is going to uh, decrease the amount of the bone resorption and ultimately that is going to lower the calcium level within the blood. So, that is something regarding the histology of the thyroid gland. We will discuss the microscopic structure uh, particularly the microscopic view of this thyroid gland in a next video. Thanks a lot for watching the video.